What's up, nerd? So sometimes people ask me questions. It's just sort of part of being an online personal trainer. Often these are clients or people that I wrote training plans for or just random people on the internet who are wondering about something. However, sometimes my answers are not 100% satisfactory. So here are six answers that I get where I can tell people are not really happy with. Now the first response that I give that is not really very uh, favorably received is it doesn't matter. Cue the rock saying it doesn't matter. No, I'm not gonna do that. How is it that uh, you came up with the name Coach? Jeff. Well, actually, when I was a little kid, it was a nickname. It doesn't matter how you came up with the name Coach. Huh? I'm gonna fire my editor. Anyway, so it doesn't matter is something that I say fairly often, especially to non-clients. If someone asks me, should I do front squats or should I do high bar back squats for quad growth? Honestly, they're very, very similar. I could go into the mechanical differences. I could go into the differences in loading or joint angles, you know, a bunch of different factors. But at the end of the day, they're very, very similar when it comes to actually producing results. So for that, it doesn't matter. For a lot of dietary stuff, it doesn't matter as well. Uh, if someone is asking about some very, very small change in diet, like should I go with broccoli or cauliflower? Honestly, it doesn't really matter. It doesn't matter! It's basically the same thing. The end results are going to be the same. And for me, I try to look at what is it actually going to do in the grand scheme of things. So in a year, will this change actually have a noticeable or meaningful difference? If the answer is no, often I will say it doesn't matter. If it's a long-term client, I'll probably go into more detail if there are actually some differences, just because they are paying me for that and they deserve a more thorough answer. And me saying it doesn't matter is sort of like brushing them off. I might do that with a random person on the internet who just sends me a DM, but for long-term clients, I'll probably give a more involved and detailed answer. But at the same time, it might still not matter. Number two is gonna be, it's not possible or it's not gonna happen. This is probably the most common one that I give and it is the least liked. People hate it when I say this, but it often needs to be said. Often when I get a questioner back, the goals are kind of ridiculous and kind of out there. I think it's good to have dreams, it's good to have a vision, it's good to have an idea, a conception of where you want to be in a few years, but some of these goals are just absolutely absurd. I've had people who are 35 to 40% body fat, which is, you know, medically obese, and their goal is to get down to 5 to 9% body fat. 5 to 9% body fat is extremely lean, and I would say maybe one person in a thousand or maybe one person in 10,000 can even get there and then maintain it. It is very, very uncommon and for most people, it's not really a realistic goal. And as a coach, I would rather tell people it's not gonna happen. Some coaches might you know, feel comfortable over promising and then worrying about under delivering later. But for me, I would rather be upfront. I would rather just tell people that's, a, that's I don't say it's a stupid goal, I just say that's not really very realistic for these reasons. You know, if you want to put on 10 kilos of muscle while losing 5 kilos of fat in a year, probably not going to happen. I mean, maybe if you're a complete beginner, but for most people, it's not very realistic. And a lot of this comes just from the fitness in industry as a whole. People want to overpromise and then underdeliver. Whatever, who cares about that? And, you know, you have programs that promise 30 pounds of muscle in 6 weeks ridiculous stuff like this you know where people overeat and they just get fat and they think it's all muscle whereas in reality it's like 10 or 20 percent muscle and you know it's not easy to tell a client your expectations are way too high and you need to lower them uh often they will say like oh well, i heard this person said it's possible well yeah they're just lying to you okay and uh as a coach sometimes it's hard to be competitive in this environment where lots of people are feeding out misinformation and lies and you know just trying to sell products or sell programs based on something that is not really reality. Number three is gonna be it's up to you. Now as a coach, a lot of the decision-making process is on me, but sometimes I like to actually put that back onto the client or the person and leave that decision in their hands if it's something small and that won't make a huge impact. So if they tell me, you know, should I do pause squats or normal squats? Well, often that's up to them. You know, I might prescribe pause squats if they have problem with stability in the bottom position or if they have trouble with their hips shooting back or something like that. But if there's no overt problems, I might just say it's up to you. You know, that's your decision, your prerogative. And, you know, it's not always up to the coach to make the decisions. If there's a very obvious problem 
sure, that's when I jump in and I make a decision and sort of hold them to that. But in other areas, I think them being able to make decisions and then track that progress and see how their body actually uh, makes changes based on their own decisions is still very valuable. As an extension to this, sometimes I just say, go by feel. If someone is like, should I do seated rear delt raises or standing rear delt raises or prone rear delt raises or some other, you know, pec deck rear delt raise, <laughs> um, that's kind of up to them. You know, if you feel a certain movement more, it's probably the right movement for you. And that's better off being your decision rather than my decision. I have my own personal preferences when it comes to exercise selection, but I also realize it's very individual. And sometimes, you know, just saying your favorite curling movement is going to be better than me prescribing a specific curling movement in most situations. And this goes mainly for isolation movements. Uh, compound movements don't change that much. But for a lot of movements, it's based on feel and it's up to you. And me saying go by feel is actually the best response. It might be a little bit unsatisfactory. It might seem almost lazy on my part, but it still promotes the best possible outcome. Number four is gonna be that's genetics. Now this is often when it comes to a particular body part. If someone wants a particular look in terms of like their biceps or their triceps or their shoulders or their lats or their calves especially, calves are super genetically determined. Um, but the reality is if someone sends me a picture of someone else, like a sports model or, or whatever, and they say, I want to look like this guy, I wanna have this guy's abs, this guy's physique, I might just say that's genetics. You can't always have the exact body you want. If you want to look like Brad Pitt in Fight Club, well, you're never gonna look exactly like Brad Pitt in Fight Club, especially the face area. Um, so I think it's important to be realistic and often I will qualify this with, you know, but you can look better or but you can look still impressive in your own way because genetics are usually not the limiting factor when it comes to the aesthetic of a particular area. Often there is a commonly accepted ideal standard when it comes to a certain body part, but if you work hard, if you're lean, if you look good, you're still gonna look pretty good, okay? So usually it's not the limiting factor. Sometimes it is at a very, very, very high level, especially for bodybuilding. But other than that, not really a big factor. The next one is gonna be steroids. Similar to genetics, some physiques are just not achievable naturally, no matter what you do. And on dozens of occasions, I've had someone send me a picture of someone who's clearly on steroids and then ask, how do I get this physique? And I'll just say, you know, that's not gonna be possible without steroids. Um, you know, maybe a 0.001% genetic outlier might be able to achieve that, but for most people, certain physiques are going to be absolutely indicative and requiring of steroid use, probably for many years and probably fairly high dosages in a lot of cases. So even though a lot of these answers are not going to make people happy, they are all the truth. You know, whether it is that would require steroids or genetics or, you know, it's going to take more time to get that kind of physique or it's not possible at all or it doesn't matter, or whatever, all of these answers are the brutal truth, and they lead to the best possible outcome. Some coaches might be willing to lie to you in order to get your business, but for me, I already have plenty of business and I would rather just tell the truth. Uh, I think that's better in the long term, and you know, the fitness industry needs more people who are telling the truth. I see actually things going in a bad direction overall. It seems like there's more liars, more cheaters, more scammers, more people willing to embellish what is possible just in order to sell a product or to sell some BS training plan or whatever. And I think you know it's better ultimately just to be honest and direct with people and not spew the same BS that is just filling up the industry more and more day by day. So. That is all for this video. Make sure to like the video. It does apparently help. I haven't noticed any kind of help, but it's still appreciated. It makes me feel good. And uh, subscribe if you haven't already. Turn notifications on so you don't miss any of my videos. And I'll see you in the next video. Peace. So guys, let me know if you have any comments, any advice, any feedback. It doesn't matter what your feedback is.